Welcome back to Velshi and Rule. We're turning to the tax battle. The Senate is expected to vote on its version of the bill next week, but it's still unclear if the GOP has the votes to get it passed. With Senator uh, Collins, Senator uh, Susan Collins of Maine, and Senator Ron Johnson both asking for changes. President Trump is putting pressure on Republicans who could be holding out. He sent this tweet out attacking Jeff Flake, Senator uh, from Arizona, yesterday. He said, quote, Jeff Flakey, who is unelectable in the great state of Arizona, quit race, anemic polls, was caught purposely on Mike saying bad things about your favorite president. He'll be a no on tax cuts because his political career anyway is toast. Now, Flake was not actually assumed to be a no vote on the tax bill, but he's yet to make his position on it public. Let's take a closer look at the state of the bill right now. Uh, it, a couple things happening. Assuming that all Democrats vote against the bill as expected, the GOP can only afford to lose two votes from its own party. Senator Ron Johnson has said he will not support the bill in its current form, which means all eyes, again, are on Susan. And Collins of Maine, who says it needs work, particularly the portion of the bill that would repeal the individual mandate. Now, the individual mandate, you'll remember, is an Obamacare regulation that all adults have to pay a fine if they don't have health insurance. Now, according to the Congressional Budget Office, repealing the individual mandate, as Senate Republicans are trying to do, would save money to the tune of about $338 billion over the next 10 years. But those savings would come at a cost won't be in the budget. It'll probably be to real people because the Congressional Budget Office estimates that that repeal of the mandate would lead to 13 million more uninsured Americans by 2027. And premiums are expected to rise by 10 percent over and above what they already are. Stephanie. Man, Ali, this thing. Uh, to help us break it down, we are joined now by Congressman Lee Zeldin, a Republican from New York who sits on the House Financial Services Committee, Lee, you've said you want to continue negotiating the details of this bill. We know you voted no in the House. What do you really want to see change here? Well, as I look at the situation for my home district, my home state, and I'm approaching this as someone representing a congressional district uh, on Long Island in New York, uh, when I looked at all of the dynamics of the House bill, while there were good components to the bill, no doubt for my district and my home state, I just had too many people who are going to have to pay more. Uh, one of the biggest reasons is because of the proposal to eliminate the state and local tax deduction. The Senate proposes to entirely eliminate the state and local tax deduction. The House did make progress in having a $10,000 property tax deduction cap. It's certainly progress. For my area, it's not enough progress. Uh, Senator Johnson wants to work on pass-through rules. Uh, that is important for people in the personal service space, no doubt. Uh, there are people who utilize the medical expense deduction. On the Senate side, they proposed to keep the medical expense deduction. Uh, but when I looked at the House bill and I added, and I'm giving you a few different examples, sure. when I added it up for my district, I just had too many people who would actually be paying more, and I had to oppose it. So, Congressman, one of the things when we've been interviewing uh, architects of the bill and people who support it, they say that most Americans don't itemize. They take the standard deduction, and they're getting a better uh, a result as a result of this bill. And really, itemizing is for the rich. Apparently, that doesn't uh, that doesn't match up with what you say about your constituents. Well, about half of my constituents itemize. Uh, and middle income, in some, for some of the people who may be watching your show, uh, they may be thinking 80,000, someone else might be thinking 120,000. You get to other parts of this country, you get to a New York City area, a New York City suburb, uh, you know, and that ends up approaching into the twos or the threes, which are numbers that may be shocking for some of the people uh, who are watching your show. But you look at the cost of living, the money doesn't go as far. But yeah, about half of my district itemizes, including a lot of people who are struggling to make ends meet. Let's say some of these things get put back in. Let's say they fix the pass-through thing that we're talking about uh, Ron Johnson opposes. Let's say they take a closer look at student debt or medical expenses or state and local, all things that matter a ton to you. I know they matter to the two of us. But you put those things back in and you have the massive corporate tax cut, you are going to balloon the deficit. And you balloon the deficit, hello inflation, hello cutting necessary programs that keep people alive in this country. How do you resolve those two issues? 
Well, so for, for one, uh, as the rules are set, you can't have more than one and a half trillion dollars over 10 years. Uh, what I'd be very interested to see is how the bill is dynamically scored. So if you, what, what do you assume is going to be the business climate or the impact on GDP or jobs or consumer spending or deficits in Washington when you have a corporate tax rate that stays in 35 percent versus how are you calculating uh, the impact on everything that I just mentioned uh, if the corporate tax rate is, say, 20 percent? So I want to look at how the bill is dynamically scored because obviously there is a positive impact to the economy. When we are able to make a do a better job in bringing businesses and jobs back from overseas, when we're able to do a better job in preventing uh, other businesses and jobs from leaving our country, and for the companies here to be able to expand and grow. Now, listen, there are some businesses out there, when they get tax relief, you know, uh, that money is going to go towards uh, maybe, you know, the shareholders or the CEOs. But, you know, if you look at the stories all across our country of how companies grew to have, you know, hundreds of jobs or thousands of jobs, uh, it is looking at both sides of the ledger and having room for that growth. There's no doubt that it would have a positive impact on our economy for our economy to grow faster than government is. Uh, and that's why I want to see how the bill is dynamically scored in a final product. We also need to have targeted corporate t cuts. Right. You have to have targeting getting rid of those loopholes. Merely cutting the corporate tax rate, there is no lever that will force any of these companies to, quote, unquote, pay people more wages, right. quote, unquote, do the right thing. Right. It might just end up in the in the pockets of shareholders as dividends or, or things like that. Lee, good to see you as always. Maybe. Great a, to see both of you. Maybe a CEO would get so rich he'd buy an NFL team. And if he did, it would be considered, uh, it would be considered an LLC and uh, he'd get a really great tax rate. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.